bring something from a spiritual perspective. Glory to God. So when you spend quality time with someone, when someone's love language is quality time, that means they desire your undivided attention. That means they want to spend time with you. They don't want you to be cooking if you're a woman or you cook at home. That's not what they want. When they want quality time, they just want cuddles. They want to sit on the couch, possibly watch a movie. They want, you know, they, they, they want hugs. They just want their hand to be held because they feel loved in that manner. Glory to Jesus. Sometimes you just want to sit on that couch and not even utter a word. But you know that I've got this person's undivided attention. So it is the same thing with God. Sometimes as people, we get so distracted with so many things. I can get so distracted and feel like people are not coming to church. Is it something my husband and I have done? Are we not preaching the pure gospel of God? Is distraction. There instead of me sitting on the feet of Jesus, studying the word of God, praying, listening to him, sometimes just keeping quiet and trying to listen what is he saying to me, that is quality time. Your quiet time. You know, when you are meditating, that is quality time. And God really wants that, you know, to spend that time with us. So, so quality time is really spending time in the word of God and searching scripture. When you're searching scripture, God brings a revelation into your heart. God gives you a drops a rema word into your spirit. You will never experience a dropping of a rema word unless you spend quality time with him. What is a rema word? It's a word that speaks to you on an individual, personal basis at a particular time of your life. Like right now. What speaks to me is through a song that talks about thanksgiving. That for me is my rema word. Thanksgiving is my rema word. It may not talk to you because we are at different levels, at different seasons of our lives. So as I spend more time with him, all that I'm hearing is thanksgiving. You know, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I appreciate you, Lord. For someone, it could be maybe you are in a season of warfare. So God will be ministering to you as you spend quality time with him about victory. How do you attain victory? How do you wage warfare? How do you arm yourself? Because the word of God says, put on the whole armor of God. So he helps you, he guides you, but you can't hear that if you're not spending quality time with him. Glory to God. So when you spend quality time with God, is you study the Bible, you, you pray, you meditate on the word, and you also listen. You listen to him. For you to be here this morning is part of spending quality time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read the word of God in the book of John 15 verse 7. Let's hear what the word of God says. John 15 verse 7. The word of God says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. When you abide in God, it means you have a relationship with God. Not a distant relationship, rather a personal relationship with him. You have confidence to go before him and ask. He does not say, sleep and ask and I will give you. He says, when you abide in me, which means you must find yourself in his presence. You must find yourself in a place of intimacy with him. You must find yourself in a place where, you know, you, you, you don't become, you can't become familiar with God and his ways. But you can, you can become a friend of God. Glory to God. You can become a person who, who can hear in the spirit. It's only possible when you spend quality time with him. You can't pray once a week when you go to church on Sunday and say you are spending quality time with God. You will not be able to hear his warnings. You won't be able to hear instruction. You won't be able to see in the spirit. Your eyes will continuously be blind. You'll be walking on the road with your eyes wide open, but spiritually you are blind. 
It is only possible when you abide in him and his words. So in order for the word of God to abide in you, you need to cultivate a particular kind of relationship. You need to be able, you know, to, to, to abide in the shelter of the Most High. Find yourself in his presence. It is a continuous process. It's not something that you do once and it's done. It doesn't work like that. It is continuous all the time. You must be doing it. Even if you're at work, uh, you are in, in engagement and other things. Within your spirit, something must be bubbling within you. When you're going through situations, something must be bubbling. Find yourself in the presence of God. It is there that he says, ask of anything and I will give it to you. He does not say he'll just give it to you in a silver platter. He says, abide, which means reside where he is. Spend quality time with him. Don't come and go. Be planted somewhere. Glory to Jesus. Am I making sense? Be planted in God. Be planted in his word. Don't just come when it's, 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 you know, when it's convenient. Don't just go before God when you want something. He's not an ATM that you, want, you will be calling to God when you want money. Cultivate a relationship. Nurture a relationship with him. If you nurture a relationship with someone, you abide with him. I abide with my husband. I live with him. I spend time with him. He knows if I feel like I'm, he's not spending time with me, I tell him I feel neglected. I'm not happy. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. And I tell you the truth of the matter is even making food for him becomes difficult. Why? I feel neglected. So I'll be saying, oh, no, I'm not a maid. It's the same with God. You need to have a relationship with him. Abide in him. Nurture that relationship. And he says when you nurture it, you nurture it in prayer, you nurture it in fasting, in studying of the word. And he says whatever you wish, it will be done for you. When you have a relationship with someone, it's easier for you, even a friend. Even a friend, when you think of your friends, it's easier for you to be kind to them and extend love and even give money. Why? Because there's a particular kind of relationship that you have. But a total stranger, you'll first be thinking twice. Are they taking my money that I'm giving them to some shrine? How will this affect my finances afterwards? You know, yes, the word of God says you must give. However, if it is a stranger, people of God with anybody, but it's stuff that I can talk openly with a friend, openly with someone I have that kind of relationship with. If you don't have a relationship with God, I tell you, if you do not spend quality time with him, you cannot cultivate a relationship with him. And you can't talk like you would talk to your child, to your, to your husband, to your friend, you know, in an open, honest manner because you do not have a relationship with him. So let's learn to abide in God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And then in the book of Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. The word of God says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may, you may be careful to do according to all that is written. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This book of the law, this one. Can you see my Bible? Let me show you how my Bible looks like. That is how much I love this Bible. I think this is my, probably my third Bible. <laughs> I don't know if I should change it because to, to get attached to a Bible is another process. Glory to God. So the word of God says this book of the law, which means there's mysteries locked in this book. It means there's something for you. It's not just the promises of God that I hear. It's mysteries about your life. It's mysteries about how you should live, where you should go, how you should conduct yourself, you know, how you should relate to people. It's all locked here. So this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but it shall, you shall meditate on it day and night, quality time. Spend 
time in the word of God. Remember the, uh, John, John 15 verse 7 said, abide. And my word must abide in you. So when you start to abide, you start to meditate on the word of God. And when you meditate on the word of God, people of God, you are spending quality time with him. That is where you can search scripture. That's where you can find God. That's where you can find your purpose. God will reveal unto you what is your purpose on this earth. Why did you, I create you? Why were you born? You won't find it at work. You won't find it in friends. You can go partying with your friends. You'll never find purpose. Purpose is locked here. When you start to abide in God, you draw closer to him. And this book of the law, the law of God that we must abide with, it is, you know, it is in that seeking the face of God. It is in that that we find purpose. It's in, it is in that that we build a strong relationship with the Lord. So this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is, it is written. If you know someone very well, glory to God, I know what it is that can upset my husband. And the reason for that is that I've spent enough time with him to get to know him as an individual. I come to understand that his personality is different from Brother Nkosana, is different from Tsunulo, is different from innocent. Glory to God. Why? Because I have a particular relationship with him. And as a friend to him, what I want to do is to please him. I don't want to do anything that will offend him intentionally. And that's exactly what the word of God says. It says so that you may be careful to do according to all that it is written. That is written in it. When you have a relationship with God, his word abides in you, and you abide in him. You will be very careful to keep the laws according to scripture. Because you know what is expected of you. You know what your friend wants. You know how to talk to him. You know how to approach the throne of grace. Because you have a relationship with him. God is not, a, by the way, kind of, you know, by the way, today... I'm going to spend three hours at church with God. It doesn't work like that. If you're going to do it, you must do it proper. Do it every week, and you will see God come for you. Glory to God. The reason why we sit in one place, we are non-progressive. Whatever we do just does not work. Our lives are here, and it falls down to the ground. It's because we don't spend quality time with him. We treat God by the way. By the way, today I am going to give my offering and my tithe because I will give my tithe because I'm, I want, you know, I want to buy a new car. So you must just, it's a butter system with trading. It doesn't work like that. You will give until you are pitch on your face and nothing will happen. Cultivate a relationship with God. Do not use God as an ATM. Do not use God as a shop where you go window shopping, you decide what you want, and then come back to him and say, give me money to go and acquire that. You will get frustrated. The best place to be at is cultivate a relationship with him. Build a relationship. Nurture that relationship. Pray. When you pray, you are spending quality time with him. When you are meditating, meditating, I may be reading words, scripture, but quietly, I'm trying to absorb something. I'm spending quality, with him, quality time with him. When I'm studying the word, I'm spending quality time with him. Even me, physically being here today, sharing this amazing word with you, I am spending quality time with him. I love going to wherever there's prayer, provided the altar is genuine. I love being there. Why? Because it is a way for me to spend quality time with the Lord. Sometimes you may find that if I'm sitting at home, I may be watching TV. I, want, I love reality shows. Talk about channels with houses. I'll, I'll watch it the whole day. And sometimes it's a waste of time. Do I need to be watching that eight hours in a day? Four hours in a day? If I can find myself in the gathering of believers, I know I'm spending some quality time with the Lord. And I know God, you know, there's an opportunity that God can speak to me. 
through someone, through a word, through something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the other, that's very important. That Joshua 1 verse 8, it, it, for me, it is so important. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, which means you cannot make a mistake. You have to walk in a particular manner. You have to do something different. You must walk in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. How do you do that? So that you may be careful. You can only be careful to uphold the word of God if you know what is expected of you. You can't be careful to uphold something or to, you know, to live in a certain manner, to behave in a certain manner if there is no clear instruction or expectation that has been explained to you. So everything that you do is here. So the word of God instructs us, hallelujah, that when we do so, when we abide in God, when we study the word of God, when we do things that will please the Lord, is then that you will make our ways prosperous. Another promise. The John 15 verse 7, what did he say? He said, I will grant you your wish. Here he says, I will make your way prosperous. Which means when you start to abide in God, you live in his statutes, you spend quality time with him, there is always a promise for something. And only God can do that. We can't do that as human beings. I can spend the whole day with you and you walk empty-handed. Maybe what we've been discussing can, you know, maybe has edified you as a human being. Maybe it has brought a solution. But only God can do what he says and, and say what he can do. He says, I will fulfill your wish and I will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Good success only comes when you spend time with God. Do not neglect to study the word. Do not neglect to, you know, to pray. Do not neglect to fast. There is good success in there. Hallelujah. Good success is not necessarily money. It could be favor, which can end up in a lot of money. Good success could be promotion. Good success could be marriage. Good success could be perfect health. Good success could be going deeper in a relationship with God. Good success means different people, things for different people at different seasons of our lives. Hallelujah. So it also depends on what you are trusting God for. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God is faithful, people of God. So let's just learn to abide in him and spend time with him undistracted undistracted. Find time. Go to your bedroom. Go to your study. Just sit there. Close the door. Even the kids must know when you are busy. I was busy. I love to pray in the car. I don't know if someone does that. I get the kids from school. You know, I sit. They get out of the car. I sit there. I can sit for an hour in the car and I'm praying or I'm reading or listening to something. And I love doing that. And I saw one of my children came, um, I think it was on Friday. She wanted to go out and play. But then she realized that, no, mommy is busy praying. She didn't disturb me. Why? Because there is a standard that she knows. This is the standard. If she's praying, I can't disturb her. She's spending quality time with her father. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So you need to, even the kids must know that in this time, uh, my mom, my brother, my father is busy praying, therefore I can't disturb them. Why? Because they now start to understand what quality time with the Lord is. Glory to God. Psalm 42 verse 1 to 4. My time is up. Psalm 42, verse 1 to, uh, to 4. The word of God reads as follows. As a deer pants for uh, flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O Lord. My soul thirsts for you, for the, for the living God. When, sh when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been food for day and night. 
while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of the Lord. With glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude um, keeping festival, glory to God. Your heart must first to spend time with God. When you are not at church, something must feel like it's missing. When you are not praying, something must not feel right. There must something, it can, you can't settle for less. When you miss to read the word of God one day, something must, cannot settle. You know, when a deer is thirsty and it's part, it's like it's running with all its strength. As thirsty as it is, it runs for the streams of water. And when it sees water, it runs. Glory to God. When you look at a deer, it's got, it can jump. It's got speed. It runs. That's what you need to do. Approach God in that manner. Lord, I just want to nothing else. I just want to spend time with you. I thirst for you. I long for you. You know, I desire you. I want a deeper relationship with you. I just want more of you. I like to say I want to see God with his two feet. I know it's not physically possible. But I can see God with his two feet through different ways in which he can demonstrate himself in my life. Physically, God is able to demonstrate himself in our lives. So that's what I refer to when I say, I just want to see God with his two feet. It means I, I long to see a different side of him. Oh, Lord, take me to a department of you I have not seen before. Take me to a place I have not been before. But that can only happen in quality time. You cannot long for something you do not know. It's not possible. You cannot long for something you don't love. You cannot long for someone you do not have a relationship with. There's certain people that you see them once in a while, hi, 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 and it ends there. The moment you part ways, you don't even remember that I met this and such person. But let me tell you something. Someone you spend a lot of time with, when you meet them, the excitement is high. When you meet them and you part ways, it feels sad. You can't wait for your next meeting because there's a particular connection. There's a particular way in which you are relating. You just want to spend more time with them. So as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for the Lord. Because I have a relationship with him, I long to spend time in his presence. I long to hear what he has to say to me. I long to worship him. I long to give him words of affirmation. I long to tell him how beautiful he is, how awesome he is, how gracious he is, how faithful he is. I long for the living for the living God, glory to God. It is only possible to long for someone that you have a deep connection with. So it's all about creating a deeper bond, a deep connection. God is always available. Are you available? Are you available to come before God and say, I just want you, nothing else but you. I will not prioritize my business outside of you. I will not prioritize my husband and, or my wife outside of you. I will not prioritize my work above you. I want to build a relationship with you. I prioritize you. I spend time with you and everything else follows. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So my verse 3 says, my tears have been my food day and night. When you miss someone, sometimes you can get to a point of tears. When you really desire the presence of someone, sometimes you feel so much pain deep inside that you can cry. But in this case, is that desire to spend time with God, to feel his presence, to see his face in prayer, to just have a different experience with him, to just hear his voice, to just, you know, just, just for him to be there with you, for him to hold your hand and say, daughter, it is well. Son, I will do it for you. That is what you desire. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, my time is up. I'm already five minutes over. But please, can I just... Um, I've got one more scripture, then I can stop. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, I apologize, people of God. Yes, yes, quality time. We spent 
quality time with the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so it's, it's all about a deeper connection with someone. And in this case, it's with the Lord. If you do not have a deeper connection with the Lord, okay, if you do not have a deeper connection with a human being that you've been relating with, it's easy to part ways. Same thing, if you do not have a deeper connection or a relationship with the Lord, it's easy to backslide because you don't see value in this relationship. And if the relationship is not mutual, you just want to take, 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 take. I'll come to you, God, when I want something. I'll come to you when I've wronged someone and I need you to, you know, ease their hearts, pamper their hearts so they can forgive me. Speak to my boss, touch their hearts so that they can give me favor. That relationship is very superficial. It's not genuine. And God deserves a genuine relationship with us. That's why he says, abide in me and my words abide in you. That's why he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, you know, from, from you. That's why, you know, the psalmist says, as the deer pants for the living streams, so my soul thirst after the Lord. Your soul must have a connection with the Lord. If you do not have a connection, you can have all the money in the world. If you don't have God in you, there will be no satisfaction. You'll still feel empty. You can be married and still live like a single person. Why? Because you're not forming a threefold cord with the Lord. So even in marriage, you need to spend quality time with the Lord. You need to, you know, surrender your marriage to the Lord and pray, oh Lord, with you we form a threefold cord that is not easily broken. Because you want God to be part of it in a deeper level so that he can help you. Marriage is not pop and place, but God is our help. Glory to Jesus. I can't go to God and ask him to intervene in the case I have with my husband if I don't know who he is. If I don't know what his word says concerning marriage, I need to, you know, to abide in his word. His word must abide in me so that I can go back to him and speak scripture to him so he can fulfill them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. First Timothy 5 verse 5. 1 Timothy 5 verse 5. The word of God records, She who is truly a widow, let, left all alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. What God, what the word of God is trying to show us here, when you think of a, a widow, glory to Jesus, she who is truly a widow, it means, number one, this widow was, is a person who was married, they lost their husband through death, right? Left all alone. She does not have a support structure. She does not have anything behind her name. She was probably supported by her husband. She was probably regarded in the community because she was married to a man of prominence. This is my, it's not in the Bible what I'm saying, but I want to bring, drive a point home. Sometimes you find that people are known because of something that they do in the community. Sometimes people are known because of associations. The moment that association is taken away or it breaks, you become invisible. Glory to God. So the word of God says she who is truly a widow, which means she has no one and she has nothing. Truly a widow. Left all alone. She does not have a support structure. She does not have, she's not like me and you who belongs to this community has set her heart open on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. A true widow knows that I have nothing. All that I have is God. All I can go to is God. I have all the time in the world to spend with God. I can go to God and seek him and 
ask for supplications, uh, you know, and, and render my supplications to him. Because he is the only sole provider. If there's anything you can learn today about quality time, learn from the widow. When you do not have hope, when you have nothing, you are left all alone. It is not a good place to be at. It's a very depressing state to be at. When you do not have friends, you don't have a community to, to go to. There is no, you know, there's no home where you can go and say, oh, they're giving food parcels. There's nothing. There's no one to support you. And we can all relate to, to a certain degree. In Houghton, we all are migrants, except for Sisani, which means there is no community to support. There is no husband. There is no pension fund from my husband that died. There's nothing. But all she does is she sets a hope on the Lord. And she's, you know, she spends her time day and night praying and rendering supplications, which means she decided to spend quality time with God, irrespective of what I'm going through, irrespective of this challenge, irrespective of COVID. I choose to spend quality time with God, irrespective of how much my job has just been, I've lost my job. You know, my salary has been cut in half. I don't know when rental, when rental will come from. I'm a salesperson. Clients are not coming. Those that are coming, they're making empty promises. At work, they say they'll promote me, but it's not happening. What is the widow doing? She continues in supplications and prayers night and day, which means she is busy strengthening her relationship with God. She's spending quality time with him. So the moment she comes and says, Father, I need your divine intervention now, God knows that if I release that 20 million today, this one will not run away from me. We have a deeper bond. We have a deeper, greater understanding. This person wants me, not what I can provide. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So that's what quality time is all about. Spending time with the Lord, seeking his face, praying, reading the word of God, meditating, and just being in his presence, building a stronger relationship with him so that when things get tough, you know, it shocks me when I see people going through challenges in life. Instead of drawing closer to him, they draw away from him, but it's because they don't have a personal relationship with God. If you have a personal relationship with God, you'll understand that when things are looking upside down, the first place where I need to run to is before him. I have to run to him. He is the only one who can solve my problem. When it looks impossible, people of God, you know those that know me have been there. When it looked impossible and I longed for death, I did not run away from God. I ran to him. I said, only you can do it for me. My mother can't help me. I told my husband one day, I said, you are the man of God. You have authority over my life. You can't help me. This one is between me, God, and the devil. <laughs> Yes, it's God who can help me. It's a, it's a warfare that I have to personally fight with the help of the Lord. I did not run away. I, I told him, my mother can't help me. She loves me. She gave birth to me. But she can't take this cup away from me. My sisters can't help me, which means I have no one. So it must be like that. When the going gets tough, don't run away from God. Run to his direction. But you can only do it if you cultivate a personal relationship with him. Because then you know that I know his word. I know what he says about me. And I believe that he is able to deliver me from this one. The moment you can say that with confidence, if I can vouch for you, um, Sis Nangamso, I vouch for you to say you owe someone 20000 Ah, You know what? Don't worry. She will pay. She will give it to you. Did she say she'll pay on the 10th of the month? She will give it to you. If I can vouch for someone in that manner, it means I know them. So if I can vouch for the Lord that he is my deliverer, he, the same God that delivered me from that one will deliver you from this one. It's because I have a relationship with him and I know he never fails. If you do not have a relationship with him, you cannot comprehend how faithful he can be. 
You cannot understand that he is your ultimate deliverer. You will not understand or comprehend or even wrap it around your head that when he says, I will provide for you in the wilderness, what he's talking about. In a dry and barren land, only God can do it. When I say to you, my sister, he will do it for you. It looks impossible, but he'll do it if you do not know who he is. So it's all about knowing who he is. And when you want to know God, you must draw closer to him. You must find yourself in a close-knit relationship with him. That's how you can know God. You can't know God from a distance. You need to abide, be planted. Stay there. Don't depart. Don't come because things are not right. Be there in good and in bad times. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right here. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So today, I just wanted us to understand what quality time is about. Quality time is about just, you know, being in a place of where you are not distracted, giving God your undivided attention. When you give him your undivided attention, he will honor that. He will give you back his undivided attention. He will suspend activities in heaven to attend to you. That's what God does. Hallelujah. So you, you pray, you fast, um, you study the word, you meditate, you go to church. You don't treat God like it's an ATM. You don't treat God like, by the way, you know, by the way, today I'm available, therefore I'll make time for you doesn't work like that. I'm sorry. You have to be dedicated. You have to continuously cultivate this relationship. Nurture it so that you can be found approved and, and you know, to be faithful. You must be faithful in you seeking God to build a relationship, to build a bond with him. So even the day that he decides to bless you, he can bless you beyond your imagination because he knows it will not drive you from his presence. If you can see God like the widow, when she has nothing, day and night, she's busy rendering prayers and supplications. This woman has nothing. If you can see God in a place of nothingness, you can see God in a place of abundance. But it cannot be the other way around. If you are not, you know, seeking the face of God, spending time with him, affirming him, and doing other things that brings glory to God. When you have abundance, believe me, when you have nothing, you will not be able to go before God because there is no relationship and you don't believe he's able to move you from where you are to the next level of your elevation. Glory to Jesus. Did I drop something into your hearts today? If anything, just this point, pray. When you pray, prayer is a two-way street. It's not about God. My husband has been good to me. Therefore, deal with him. Doesn't work like that. That's not prayer. Yes, you can report him. He likes to say, when my wife is too hard, I report him <laughs> to God. <laughs> Amen. So he can report me. I can report him to God. But prayer is, is reciprocal. You pray and you listen. So spend time in prayer and listen to what he says. Study the word of God. He says, abide in me and my word abide in you. Study the word of God. Let it be planted in your heart. You know, keep the laws of the Lord because with that it comes good success. He says he will make your ways prosperous and you shall experience or have good success. In all your ways you will have good success. Glory to God. As the deer panthers for the water brooks, I long for the Lord. When they say this, you know, this power prayer, I want to run there because I know there's a word for me. It's possible that God is going to drop something for me. When they say there's a conference and we're going to have a conference this year, I want to be there in every session because I don't want to miss an opportunity. I don't know when God is going to show up for me personally. So I need to be there all the time. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's be like the widow who has nothing but all she can do is hope in the Lord. All she can do is pray and render her supplications. 
continuously. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. May I ask that we rise on our feet and just spend two minutes appreciating God and just saying, God, I want to get to, into a deeper relationship with you. I want you to be God over my life, over my situation, my household. I want to know who you are in my life. I want to get to a place of deeper intimacy with you. That nothing can move me. When the going gets tough, I want to be able to run back to you. And not run away from you. Because away from God, people of God, there is no solution. Solution is found in God alone. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Come on, talk to your father. Spend some time with him in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell him how wonderful he is. How far he has brought you. How much he has provided for you. How much he has spoken into your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you, oh God, for you are God who draws us to yourself. You are God who calls us by name. Desire, we desire, oh God, to abide in you, oh God, that your ways may abide in us. Father, we desire to bring worship to you. We desire, oh God, to praise you. We desire to exalt you. We desire to glorify your name. We desire, oh God, to get a deeper relationship with you by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Have your way today, oh God. Manifest your power, oh God. Show yourself strong, Jehovah God, and speak greater things of our lives by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you, oh God. We exalt you, oh God. We glorify your name, oh God. We declare you are worthy, Jehovah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. to you to transact oh intimacy Lord with you oh God coming to call for God coming to call for who he is quality time knowing where we will be located we are not visiting God we are not visiting the things of God but abiding dwelling staying there located there that is our residence. Oh, we desire you, Lord. As once again, we declare we love you, Lord. Oh, I love thee, Lord. By the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Oh, not transactional. Not a transaction. Not a transaction. Not a transaction. Coming to God. For God, coming to God, for God, oh, in the name of Jesus, glory, glory, glory. Oh, Lord, we bless you. Receive worship, receive adoration. Where we have transacted with you, oh God, we appear for mercy. He appealed for forgiveness. Where we have come to God to transact. Where we have made you like a panadol, Lord. Because there is a headache, we have come to you. But when there is no headache, Lord, you are at the back seat. We appeal for mercy. He asks you for forgiveness. Where we have come to you because there is something we need from you. We are using you. And not coming to God. Oh God, yes. 
Jesus, may we pray, may you touch our heart. Receive our prayer and respond, O oh Lord. And in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of God, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. So please be my panado. When the headache is gone, there is no need for you because I came to you for cause of headache. Coming to God for God and not a transactional relationship. And I like the way you do. Thank God next week you are doing part three. I need to hear act of service. Hallelujah. We have not touched it. There are five love languages. How many have we dealt with? Two. So we left with three. We have it. It has to come. It has to come. Hallelujah. You will see in every relationship, the moment is transactional. Once you hear the person say, no, he was using me. Why? Because you felt it was transactional. Even in marriage, when you see a husband, there is tension. The wife is, no, you are coming to me, not for me. You are in need. Are you together? Then the wife feels, no, my husband is using me. And the husband says, this wife of mine, she's not responding. No, she feels used. Anyone who feels used, you're not going to get what you are looking for. You're not going to get. And the moment the wife comes now, the wife is good and wondering, oh, my husband, you're looking nice, handsome today. I like your haircut. Now I'm wondering, where is my wife going? Are we together? Why? Because now I have not received those in years. Now I am receiving it and now I'm wondering, is it revival or she's looking for something? Are we together? Because the moment I say, no, please give me this, I say, no, that's what he needed. You are not coming for me. You are coming for that. But you are using me to get to what you are looking for. That's what we are saying. It's coming out here. Going to God for God, not transacting with God. It's just his time. Amen. Part three next Sunday. You must hear the act of service. How does we express love? Time. Amen. Like somebody says, uh, uh, it was a joke. Like this person is coming to God asking for something. Even God is shocked himself. I say, ah, ah, is it you? Meaning, I have never heard of you for donkey years. All of a sudden, you have just appeared and said, God, please help me with this. Even God himself is shocked that, is it you? Meaning, I have never heard of you. He's trying to bring that, I, this, I have not heard of you in years. But all of a sudden, now you are saying, no, please give me this. No, you are one to use me. Are you looking for me or are you looking for that? And somebody has say, are you looking for God for God or are you looking for God? Rural uh, with apostle, meaning are you looking for what belongs to God or are you coming to God for God? Hallelujah. Let us give offering and go home and express our love in giving. Please, I'm asking you from the altar, you must do part three. These things you must sing. Amen. I 
I'll pray for my wife to have the grace to share three Sundays or four Sundays or five. If it's every love language per Sunday, we are not rushing. Amen. It's powerful. My heart is touched. That's why people say, you know, I will laugh so that I have to listen uh, again in my quiet time. I don't want to miss this. Hallelujah. Quality time. Quality time. Amen. We don't like do uh, giving an offering. If you have it in cash, we will bring it here in front. Should you want to give via EFT or please just put the banking details on the screen. Should you want to offer electronically based on the banking details, you can utilize. And let us bless the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We want to express love also even in the giving, even in the choice of our giving, even in obedience to your word in terms of giving as a way of expressing our love. Not that we love you, but you loved us first and gave Jesus to be the propitiation of our sins. Receive our giving as a token of appreciation to your glory, Lord, for who you are. Even as David said, even giving you, we are giving back your own for everything comes of you, from you and of your own we are bringing. Receive praise and worship in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please, you are welcome to come forward and put it here. For those online, you are welcome to send your offering utilizing the banking details that have been shared there in Jesus' name. Amen. Please come forward. Oh, Father, we declare your blessing upon your people in the name of Jesus. We pray may you bless every individual life here, Lord. Let this word draw us closer to you and closer. Let it bring us to a place of surrender, a place of desiring more of you. Let us have quality time with you, Lord, where we are coming to you for who you are, not what we can get out of you. Preserve us and preserve our children, Lord. In the name of Jesus, preserve against the pandemic, Lord, the arrows that flies by day. Preserve us for, against the arrow and the pestilence in darkness, Lord. Preserve our children in the day, in the night. Preserve our lives in the day, in the night. Preserve our lives in the house, on the street, going out. Let us be preserved in the name of Jesus. May your face shine upon us, O oh God. May you be gracious to us. May you lift up your countenance toward us and grant us your peace. In Jesus' name, we declare the offering, Lord, sanctify and set apart for your work. Glorify yourself, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Church is over. Should you need a prayer or a counsel, please just remain behind and we shall attend to you. Otherwise, thank you for being here. We'll see you next Sunday. Next Sunday is casual Sunday. Uh, come casual. But uh, with a heart to have an intimacy with God, a, qual a, a quality time with God. That is next Sunday. Amen. Please invite a friend. In the background we've prepared some flyers because since you have moved here to, uh, to sensitize that we are in this place, it's still at the printing place, so we should get them in the week and they should be available from Sunday. Thereafter, we start talking how we uh, share those. Hallelujah. So next Sunday, we are here. And on, Thursday, on Wednesday, let's connect for revival hour and let's go deeper again into this mystery of intercession. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, it's saying they invite someone to church. Yeah, let's come closer.